May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our salvation. Amen. Please be seated. Well, Lent is here. Oof. This year is going very quick. Lent is usually a season of penance and of self-reflection. I often call Lent the season of mirrors, where we need to look in the mirror at ourselves and see where we are. We have already steered ourselves away from God and His original plan for us, and that's why we have this season to look at where we have broken away from that. I remember in a seminary, I had a professor who used to preach what I call cheap grace. And maybe some of you have heard it. That you're all evil, wretched sinners. There's nothing good in you that only through God can you be saved. And you can get better only through God because you're evil and wretched. He said this was good news. Yeah, I laughed too. I also got a C in that class. Um, <laughs> I wrote there was a just cause for war, and I used Augustine, and, and he was a pacifist. And either way, it was a fun time. <laughs> um, but anyway, this is what we call cheap grace. And cheap grace is basically where somebody says to you, listen, you can't do anything. Just go about your way. Keep doing what you're doing. And in the end, Jesus' blood will fix you. But where's your sanctification? So that means there's nothing on our part. There's, there's no acceptance. There's no... You see how this is very cheap? And it's wrong. Yes, it's only through Christ that we're saved. But there takes a certain point on your part to say, okay... I accept you, and I accept what you're saying. I take on your yoke, and I accept who you are, and I am going to try and be better through your help. That's real grace. Now, even worse than that now, today, as you see these people that are fl flourishing all over TV talking about this prosperity grace. If you're a good Christian, God will make you rich. Have you heard these village idiots? <laughs> then stop sending money to them so they won't be on TV anymore. Because they're wrong. How many of you have learned your best lessons through happy times? Your best lessons were learned through happy times? Okay, now let's do it the other way. Through adversity and through bad times, you learned your best lessons. Yeah. Jesus went into the wilderness for 40 days and fasted. I don't know about you. I've tried to fast for a day and a half, and it hurt. But I learned more about who God is and who I am in his big life, in, in my life, through that fasting, through that problems. I've learned more about who God is through the problems that are presented to me as your parish priest. I learn more who God is as I sit by your bedside and hold your hand. Those of you that have given birth, you understand exactly what's going on through here. You go through this huge pain of giving birth to a watermelon through a straw. <laughs> but that joy of that child afterwards you learn something. Now some of you may have said, okay, that's it, I'm not doing it again. And been blessed that way with only a child. But what I'm getting at here is, is, is this is a problem with grace. And I want you as a Lenten discipline this year to think about who you are in God's big plan. If you believe that you are an evil, wretched sinner and there's no help in you, you're looking back. You're looking behind you. You're looking at what you were, and you're ahead. You'll never go forward because you're always looking back. And the world loves to bring up that. If you look at the presidential candidates for this year, 
you notice that the field is very slim. I, I think it's bizarre that out of a country of two billion plus people, we're down to these choices of, what, a dozen people? Why? Because we want to do this to the candidates. We want to look at what they did in the past. That's all we're interested in. Well, who would want that job? Whenever a bishop gets promoted, we do this. We look at, okay, what did you do in the past? I'll never be bishop. If they ever look in my past, oh, well, you know, he used to be a Marine, and, and, and then they'll bring out all my buddies in the Marine Corps. Oh, you should have seen when he did this in Panama, or when he was in the war in Somalia, he did this. That makes him unworthy of a bishop. That's my sin, that I've had to deal with God, not yours, and it's none of your business. And it's just with you. What you did in the past, let it be in the past. If you believe what you've done in the past dictates what your future is, then you take on that cheap grace. There's no sanctification in you. There's no change in you. And that's what Jesus promotes. He says, you were... But now you are. Paul says that in every one of his epistles. Therefore you were sinners. But through Jesus Christ, you are now made righteous. You are now made righteous. If you ever heard a Christian say, I'm just a sinner, they are not listening to the teachings of Jesus Christ or the Bible. They have identified themselves as first and foremost sinners, and that's all they'll ever be, until they turn their way around and start living to what is written in gospel. St. James wrote this in his epistle letter. We all stumble in many ways. We all stumble in many ways. This is the greatest truth. This is the greatest truth of the story of Adam and Eve. Isn't that it happened, for those of you that want to argue with the historical significance, saying, well, the Old Testament is just a, a, a story to keep us. Well, I'll go with you to a certain point. Adam and Eve may not have happened, but it happens. Every single day, every one of us falls into a temptation of Adam and Eve. Every one of us. So it, even if it didn't happen, it happens. It's a present tense. I'd even go to the point of putting it as a perfect verb. Because it will happen eventually. We'll be tempted like Adam and Eve. But when we become Christians, when we get baptized, a profound change occurs in our fundamental identity. And if you don't change, if you stay the same before your baptism as you do after your baptism, you're going to answer up for it eternally, but not with our Lord. Because your identity change changes that. You die with Jesus and you rise with him. It changes with the death of Jesus on the cross and something within us also dies. We need to call this person who died pre-baptism the old me. The old me would have done things that way, but the new me is going to be sanctified. You are a new creation. A new creation in Christ Jesus. You are in Christ. So when God looks at me, God sees Christ. Because the old... I'm in with him in God's view. The same is with you. If you are in Christ, when God looks down on you, he doesn't see the old you. You see the old you. You beat yourself up about the old you. God sees the new you. Paul puts it this way, and I think it's the most perfect way. He says... Christ is perfect. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved. Did you catch that word in the middle there? Holy. How many times have you ever said somebody is holy? 
How many times have you said yourself to be holy? Yet Paul, who wrote this letter 2,000 years ago, saw you here today, and hopefully we're doing the plan that God had put for us today to start believing that you are holy. Satan wants you to think, oh, you're a wretched sinner. You screw up. You bounce your checks. You're judgmental. I mean, the list can go on and on. When's the last time in your prayers you actually thought yourself to be holy? Then stop allowing Satan to rule your life and allow Christ Jesus to run your life. You are holy and loved, and you are in Christ. So if we go to the gospel reading for today, again, boys and girls, put this with the rest of your artwork up on the refrigerator, this gospel reading, and underline here the one line. When Jesus came out of the water, God said, a voice from above came and said, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. If you are in Christ, you got a handwritten letter from the Lord here. In you, he is well pleased. Start believing it. Do not allow Satan to tempt you in this Lenten season to think you are less than what you should be. You're working at it. That's part of your sanctification process. But any soldier will tell you, you cannot win a battle if you're looking behind you all the time. Do not allow your past to dictate your future. Your future is to be sanctified and to be with Christ and to be holy. Then start living a life today as if it's the last day of your life and to be holy. You are the beloved. Can I get an amen to that? Amen. And start believing it, folks. Stop allowing Satan to run your life to think that you're crap. You're not. God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son to die for you, to die on the cross for you. He gave you his son. That's how much he loved you. To share our pains. Don't allow Satan to take you away on this Lenten season, away from what you can be. A holy and sanctified people. Let your life be so inspirational that when you go out these doors, people want to know what's different in you. I knew what you were, but what are you? What's going on with you? Be holy when you leave these doors. If you have children, start praying with them. Start reading scripture for you adults that just come to Sunday and at your holy time. Men, you're called to be the spiritual heads of your house. Start leading in Bible studies. It may be goofy at first because you haven't done it and whatever, but start reading the Psalms. Start reading scripture together. You cannot start up a brand new DeLorean without opening the owner's manual. How do you expect to get into heaven? By osmosis? Or Father's really nice sayings. Coming here makes you a Christian about as much as Going to Burger King makes you a hamburger. <laughs> Start learning God's word. Start coming to Bible studies. Start working on your own life, living out what God has put down for you. If there's somebody in your family that you need to forgive, then let this be the year where you start sanctifying yourself and forgiving those who have offended against you. The apricot pie wasn't that good anyway, so don't worry about it. Let it go. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.